Hey guys, my name is Scott, and I'm really excited right now because I'm about to do something that I've only dreamed of doing for the past four years. I'm about to build an electric car. So I thought I'd start by kind of giving you an overview of the vehicle that I chose to do the conversion with and some of the parts that I have. Um, so uh, right in front of me here is the vehicle. This is a 1997 Chevrolet S10, uh, which is actually a very popular conversion vehicle. Uh, I think probably the most popular conversion vehicle, although I can't really base that on any uh, hard data. Just to see, you see a lot of these in term, on uh, EV websites. So this one's mine. I paid $1,600 for it. And uh, it does run, you know, decently clean. A couple minor issues, as you might expect, for such an old vehicle. Uh, you know, this is uh, a little scratched up and roughed up. It was definitely uh, a work truck. You know, you, you can see just little problems like that. Um, I'll show you inside real quick. So, obviously, passenger door, you know, a little dirty, not too bad. Uh, again, j just a little dirty. I can probably uh, clean this down if I really wanted to. Uh, let's go back here. It doesn't really move forward very far. Um, this is the extended cab, so I do get jump seats. So you can fit a very tiny person. I've got another one on this side, but the, uh, the plastic that goes in front of it is uh, it's kind of missing. So that's a little unfortunate, but the seat does work, so that's fine. You know, a couple of beer holders right here. Um, this, this is kind of worn, and yes, there is a rather sizable rip in the driver's seat. So I might, uh, I might replace the driver's seat. I haven't really decided what I want to do about that. Could just leave it. We'll see. Um, like I said, this is a bit worn. Um, that is actually a third seat, though, believe it or not. I don't think you can actually fit too many people in there. I'm trying to give you a good shot, but I'm bad at this. Yeah, it's, it's uh, maybe, maybe eight inches wide, if I'm being generous. So, it's better suited as an armrest. Um, up front, uh, we do have a, a five-speed. You do want a five-speed if you're going to be doing a conversion, or a four-speed, or you, just, just a manual gearbox. The um, thing is, an automatic loses, uh, has, a, has a bit of an efficiency loss. Um, because it works really well for an engine where you're idling a lot, um, but you don't idle with a, uh, uh, an EV, so no need for an automatic. You'll just be wasting amps. We do have a stereo, aftermarket. Probably going to be coming out, though, because uh, I like to install iPads in the dashboards of my cars. So uh, I think an iPad mini would go nice, or maybe a Samsung Galaxy 7, whatever the hell they call it. You know, 7-inch... Android tablet. Uh, heater controls um, does work except uh, only on high and uh, you know you try any other setting here it's, it's like it's off. I thought they would be the resistor and I talked to the guy who I bought this from about that he said yeah we replaced the resistor several times still not working so it might be a, a wiring issue or the blower motor itself but we'll see about that. And a couple more scuffs not a big deal papers and uh, a couple more beer holders right there still more beer holders down here and uh, let's go around to the other side before we do that tailgate works so uh, gas cap obviously now this is something I'm a little um, concerned about you know most people will put their EV charger right where the gas cap used to be but uh, in uh, Virginia, they recently enacted a new law saying you have to have a cutoff switch where the, uh, the gas cap used to be, the, the filler. And uh, there's not a lot of room in here, so I'm not entirely sure I can do both. I may have to dedicate it to the cutoff switch, which would kind of suck, because I don't know where I would put the charger then. Eh, well, that's Virginia government for you anyway. So inside here, I think something, something is wrong. I'm not entirely sure what. Oh, it's just telling me I opened the door. 
Well, that's nice of it. And now it's not. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. We do get uh, manual windows. What's the big... Oh, God. We got gauges. We do have a tack in this truck. I actually drove another truck before this one uh, that I was thinking about buying. It was complete crap, so I didn't buy it. But it didn't have a tack, whereas this one does. This one also has a back window, uh, which the other truck did not have. And that's that's kind of nice, I guess. Uh, this one, you get... Uh, well, they both had this. Well, they, they, um, they didn't do that, but, uh, you know, they, they have visors. And actually, this is pretty cool. Oh, God. They have actually uh, two visors in here. So what you can do is you can move this out of the way over there and then pull this down so you can block the sun that's in the corner, which is sometimes an issue when I'm driving in my, uh, my other car, which is a uh, 99 Corolla. So that's kind of cool, I thought. And, you know, issues. Uh, mirror works. Uh, this guy left his CD in here. I can't even read what that says on there. Oh, and this, this also has a, uh, something to go there. So if you don't want to see what's behind you, you can just pull that right out and, uh, block everything. It's nice. Uh, over here, you know, vents and such, uh, this is kind of cool. I thought this, this big blocky switch. So you just want to turn on parking lights, you can. If you just want to turn on, uh, headlights, you can't. The whole thing comes on. Um, obviously this will keep the interior lights on if you do it like that. I found that out the hard way. Um, then anything else below that is, uh, just, uh, adjusting the intensity of the interior lights. Over here, I don't think this actually works. Or it might, I don't really remember. There, there's one of the two trucks I looked at, uh, this did not work. Brake release. Works. Parking brake. Works. Um, that's, that's pretty much it in here. I guess you got these, uh, two cigarette lighters holes plus this cigarette lighter hole. So you can plug in lots of cigarette lighters and light up all your cigarettes. And, uh, in here, that's just an ashtray. Very deep ashtray. You, you can tell, uh, <laughs> the kind of person they built this, this vehicle for. But anyway, uh, let's open the hood and see what's what. Well, I can't really open the, uh, the holder upper with this. Sorry if the wind is ruining the microphone right now. It does have some new parts. This is a AC compressor, which is brand new. Um, the alternator is brand new, I'm told. I'm not entirely sure where it's located. Oh, right down in there. You can see it does look nice and shiny. And uh, new battery. And strangely enough, these are like the three parts I am going to be reusing from this vehicle. So it's kind of nice that they're new. I'm going to be... You know, this is generally a bad idea, but I'm going to be running the AC compressor off the tail shaft of the motor. Uh, because in Virginia you do get both temperature extremes. You get really hot and really cold. I'm also going to be using an alternator. You know, most people don't do this, but uh, I'm too cheap to go out and buy a DC to DC converter. So that means I'm also going to need to be uh, reusing the battery here. But everything else in here is, uh, well almost everything else, is going to be coming out. Uh, I'm leaving the brakes. You know, I'm leaving the windshield washer fluid, obviously. Um, and uh, actually, power steering, I haven't really decided what I want to do. Um, the thing about power steering is usually you run off the engine with the belt. And, uh, you know, you, only, you really need it most when you're at idle. And uh, you don't idle with an EV, so power steering pump is kind of useless. So a lot, some people will get the power steering pump from a Toyota MR2. Uh, which I might do, and other people will just uh, cap off the power steering, which I might do. It'll be kind of hard to steer. And other people will actually replace it with a manual rack, which is what I'm uh, most interested in doing. So, we'll see what happens there. Um, so yeah, big useless bit under the hood. Let's take it for a drive. So uh, first let's just fire it up, see how she sounds. What are you yelling at me about? I don't even know. And there's a lot of fuel left in here, which is kind of a good thing, is that means less to drain out. But uh, it's kind of a bad thing because uh, it might run out and the fuel gauge doesn't actually work. 
and the car is sort of uh, unregistered right now. So I'm just gonna go up the street. And I hope that's a good enough angle for you because uh, it's hard for me to do any better than that, really. Just wanted you to hear how she runs right now. Then we can do a comparison uh, after I'm done converting. Whoa, this is also kind of a very uh, precarious position for this tripod. Now, I'm not used to driving a truck, so don't be too surprised if I do stall. It's, it's a very different driving dynamic to driving a car. You probably hear how loud that is. I'm only at 2,500 revs. There we go. Yeah, the, the clutch, you know, in the car you can kind of feel it catch. You can't feel it catch at all in here. In, uh, you know, in a car, it's kind of like a low catch point. It's a very high catch point up here. So, uh, it is very, very different. We're going down a very steep hill here. Brakes work pretty good. Um, I haven't tried any emergency stops yet, uh, which I probably should do, but I just can't bring myself to. Uh, the tires have decent tread. You can hear that whining sound? Maybe. Let's go up the hill. It's louder than it is fast. That, that is kind of an issue. <laughs> um, I've actually heard some people say the acceleration improves after they convert to electric. So uh, we'll see what happens. It shudders a little bit. It's, it's nothing really major. I think it does need an alignment. Um, and also there's a bit of play in the steering, which is really an issue at highway speeds. It also probably needs to be balanced because there's a bit of vibration at highway speeds. And the shifter, it's kind of weird. You know how it usually is supposed to just sort of be in the middle? Like you hit it left and it goes back to the middle, you hit it right, it goes back to the middle. Uh, this one doesn't do that. So that's pretty much it. Just uh, ride around the block and I'm uh, heading back home now. Also, it's, it's kind of nerve-wracking trying to back it up doesn't work very well, <laughs> at least on a hill, anyway. Uh, so, we'll see if that improves. Doi! Yeah, the, the way I set this tripod up, there's one leg in the cup holder, well, it wasn't the cup holder until it fell out, and uh, one on the seat and one on the floor. <laughs> Works great. Something else I really don't like about this, the key can be, like, really finicky sometimes. That was a little bit better. Let's try it again, though. And now it's not. Oh, come on. There's like a little button here. I'm not sure when you're supposed to press it, so I'm, I'm just pressing it all the time. And it... Oh, come on! Well, this has been a pretty good demonstration, I'd say. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether it's an ignition thing, or, you know, whether all trucks, all Chevy S10s are like this, or what. Usually it's not this bad, and usually it's only when it's coming out that it's an issue. Come on, you little bugger. Coming up on Electruck TV, I pushed the truck out of a garage. Scott gets a package. Heavy! And the neighbors help us remove the bed. So stay tuned to Electruck TV.